This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is all about ice erosion. It's part of the geomorphology and rocks playlist. And this, this video is going to cover how ice is an erosional agent, what actually happens, how the ice transports uh, sediment and material, and look at the different glacial and ice cap features that are created because of this erosional effect and moving the material from place to place uh, within this glacier or frozen river. All right, so the ice erosion really occurs in two separate locations or situations or scenarios. So the first one is alpine. Alpine uh, ice or kind of the cryosphere, which is what it's part of. The alpine denotes glaciers or glaciers. And it's called alpine because the first research conducted on these glaciers was in Europe, uh, in the Alps in various countries that the Alps, Alps kind of like, uh, you know, contain or, or uh, are located in. So the research was done here, and glaciers basically are frozen rivers that act under gravity, and there's an area where the uh, precip's going to add to the glacier, and it's going to flow downhill to a location where there's going to be a loss, and the um, ice will melt. So we have a continual process of movement of ice and snow downhill. Now, this can contain, obviously, materials, you know, different size rocks and debris and sediments. And it can also um, be involved with weathering and um, breaking down rock before it can erode as well. The other uh, area uh, or category in ice erosion is to do with continental Continental uh, ice, which is to do with ice caps and ice sheets. Now, this could be in certain areas of the world. So in the Northern Hemisphere, the North Pole, where you have uh, an area of the Arctic Ocean that's going to freeze over to roughly about one meter thick of ice. Um, and the extent uh, based on climate uh, is changing. So this thick, you know, one meter thick ice kind of cap over the North Pole uh, is there, but also the Antarctic is a much larger, much more extensive ice cap and can basically uh, exceed over one mile in thickness over the majority of the, of the Antarctic uh, continent and has year-round snow and ice and it's a cold desert, but there is a small amount of precip that comes down snow which is going to add to that ice cap, but this this ice cap is between 30 and 35 million uh, years old. So that's the two areas we discuss in ice erosion. Now, the edges of the Antarctic, you have glaciers and various ice caps that are um, retreating, uh, decreasing in volume, melting at certain speeds based on the climate, and research has shown that certain areas of Antarctic are melting quicker than others and producing more um, more melt and uh, water runoff. So we see this from the uh, Apollo uh, missions, this uh, blue marble picture, the Earth, where in the southern hemisphere you have Antarctica. You see some of the cloud formations, but below that you see the ice caps right here. Okay, all right, Antarctica. And obviously in some high elevations, obviously the, the Europe's kind of hidden up here, but you have your frozen river, your glacier, or glacier, right here, and you have this mountainous region, this um, very U-shaped valley, which is cut and created by the glacier, uh, the movement. So this could be, you know, obviously weathering to form the U-shaped valley, and then obviously the erosion of the transportation of such material um, with it as it goes downhill with gravity. So again, another glacier right here, you see the terminus where the glacier is going to end, in this case, in a beautiful lake. So when you discuss ice erosion, you'll discuss the extent of the ice. Then we'll discuss the locations, alpine and continental, but the extent of the ice can fluctuate. Fluctuate based on the season, based on the tilt and the uh, Milankovitch cycles. can also fluctuate through the solar cycle, in the 14-year cycle, and beyond, um, and also can fluctuate based on um, 
you know, ice ages, whether it's a ice age or an interglacial period. Um, the ice age, you know, roughly around today is 10% coverage of the Earth's surface is ice. Has, well, during ice ages can be extend up to 30% ice coverage or ice cover during the height of the ice age. Now, that's in this case, the, the last ice age was around 20,000 years ago. But research has shown that between 600 and 800 million years ago, they suggest, or their research tells them or indicates that the Earth was close to 100% ice during that period. So the glacier or glaciers features are very detailed. Now, this is a whole subject, a whole topic, and just briefly discuss the erosional part of these ice uh, rivers. And obviously, I've drawn a little brief schematic. So you have this mountainous area, the bedrock, and you have a certain gradient or slope. And this is part of a U-shaped valley cut by the glacier. Now, the glacier is going to accumulate uh, up higher elevations in the mountains and flow downhill very slowly. And there's a very large you know, mass and volume of ice and maybe some snow on the top. But when it gets compacted, it turns to ice. And it's obviously extremely uh, heavy with the, uh, the effect of gravity pushing down, and it's going to flow. Now, the weight of the glacier is going to, and the, the bedrock is going to actually melt. Uh, well, different levels of melting is going to occur right on the surface of the bedrock between the large glacier and the ice uh, and the actual rock itself. So this is where you get the meltwater. And this, like, lubrication, so to speak, of the glacier is going to allow it to move uh, downhill and have some sort of velocity over time moving downhill. So the amount of meltwater is going to control the speed or velocity or rate of the movement of the glacier. Um, some move slow, some move quickly. And also that would uh, depend on you know how much uh, weathering is going to occur. Now I know this is just erosion, but weathering is part of this as well. The, uh, the plucking which is literally, as the ice moves over the bedrock, it's going to dislodge and break down pieces of rock and literally just pick up the rock and bring the rock in the glacier and move it down slope. Uh, also, you have abrasion of rock hitting rock and the actual action of breaking down the rock. Um, and then these are carried or transported, which is erosion, downhill. And obviously, they can erode and weather the bedrock as they move downhill down the slope. So with these processes, both the weathering and erosion combined with these glaciers, you get distinctive landforms, distinctive features that are formed on the bedrock and distinctive uh, obviously formations and landscapes and patterns on the rock. And plus, you also have distinctive uh, depositional environments or depositional landforms that are created when the material being carried or dragged or, or dislodged, the material is going to be deposited in certain areas. So you get different types of moraines, terminal moraines, medial moraines, lateral moraines. Uh, you get t uh, glacial till. And you get various landforms that are formed only through glaciers. So you can see these, these landforms in present day where there are no glaciers. I think, well, in the past, there was a glacier here. There was the movement. That you can see uh, you know, distinctive uh, patterns and features on the rock that would tell you that it was from a glacier, where other uh, processes in nature don't always give that, that clear indication of what happened in the past. But glaciers are one of those things. It's fantastic. So if one of those examples is on the rock itself, there'll be striations, which are kind of like, here's, here's the rock, and you'll have lines in the rock that are like grooves that have been physically dug out by the force and the mass of the glacier as it moves in a certain duration, direction. And you can see that they'll be parallel to each other and these lateral grooves or lines, and it will show you where the, the glacier moved, and you'll see these massive like, you know, massive boulders that are randomly placed in different areas, and these are called glacial erratics. You know, these massive multiple-ton uh, rocks 
of certain uh, type and certain composition that are not native to the area but have been transported from a different location down through with the glacier and then just dropped and deposited as the glacier retreated during an interglacial period or hot period. So these massive rocks can just be like randomly placed on the surface and they're basically just the uh, remains or the deposited uh, material of the or from the glacier. So in conclusion, uh, glaciers, ice caps, they can, uh, actually glaciers, they can uh, have or accumulate large amounts of rock material they can transport and also erode uh, large amounts. They create or exist in, in certain locations that are very distinctive uh, based on temperature and climate elevation. They also look at uh, the, the distinctive and very obvious landforms that these glaciers can create and the environments that are that are formed through the deposition of material um, like moraines and uh, erratics and the beautiful combination of both weathering and erosion at work over long periods of time to uh, shape and sculpt the Earth's uh, landscape. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.